Motorsport auctions are the global marketplace to buy and sell used race and rally cars, parts and associated equipment. Visit their website for more details. Hello and welcome to Boswell Race Roundup, we're here today for the very final round of the 2015 Aston Martin GT1 Championship. Today's race comes from Okayama Full Course, a change to our initial schedule, we were going to run the short course. The Drivers' Championship will be decided today, after round 4 at Mount Panorama, Tobias Soltau had a gap of 22 points over Daniel Turk. As we come into the final round though, that gap has been cut to just 4 points. We did say earlier on in the Championship that it may come down to bonus points being awarded, and Tobias Soltau extends that lead to 5 points after taking pole position here today. Neil Bamba can still catch Matt Van Delden for third in the championship. Neil Bamba qualified fifth and currently sits 15 points behind Van Delden. So mathematically, after qualifying, Daniel Turk does need to take the fastest lap of the race and the race win from Tobias Soltau to clinch the championship. Before we head to the main race though, let's check out the qualifying lap from Tobias Soltau, a 125.915. Tobias coming through the final corner onto the main straight to start his fastest qualifying lap then. If for whatever reason that it did finish in a draw between the top two, it would come down to race wins, so Daniel Turk would take that. He's had five already compared to Soltau's three. Tobias coming up through Williams' corner onto the Moss S down towards Outward Curve. We're running 28 laps today here at Okiyama. Everybody must make at least one mandatory pit stop to change all four tyres, so the timing of that may prove crucial as well. Tobias now through Atwood Curve, this always sees plenty of action, especially on the exit, people getting the power down too early and spinning off the track. We're now going down the back straight towards the hairpin. We've already spoke about the driver's standings, but what about the team standings? Well, it is the Firefighters Charity out front, quite a large gap to Acorn Printing in second. From this round we are running different software for our race data capture, so how the points are worked out for the teams is slightly different. This is in preparation for next year, so now it takes all the drivers who have participated, and for whatever teams they are racing for, it will total up the points for them. With these changes in place, it means Acorn printing our 294 points beyond the leaders the Firefighters Charity, Motorsport Auctions sit in third a further 62 points behind, and Bowdoin Solutions in fourth another 62 points behind. Soltau almost at the end of the lap then, coming through Mike Knight corner now, you see the pit entrance there on the right hand side. He needs a nice smooth entry into the final corner to get the power down for the main straight. Soltau coming down the main straight to complete his lap, a 125.9. With qualifying over, let's head to the main race and see who will be crowned champion. Acorn Printing are the team wear supplier for Bosra and have even produced clothing items for President Clinton. See the video description to learn more. Everybody sat on the grid waiting for the lights to go green. Now Daniel Turk has got an advantage over Soltau for finishing second in qualifying. He's got the inside line down towards the first corner. Neil Bamber is the only driver here today for Bowdoin Solutions. See Van Delden there in third trying to stay with the leaders. The Firefighter Charity go three wide into the first corner. Ricky Green gets punted off track. We didn't mention in the qualifying section, but Kip Stevens has joined the Motorsport Auctions team for this round. As you see the Firefighters Charity cares. Kip Stevens is in the second of the Motorsport Auctions team just behind them. So our leaders are safely through the first corner. Here you see Daniel Turk has taken the lead. Tobias Soltau second, Van Delden third. Everyone coming up through Atwood. Don't forget Daniel needs the race win and the fastest lap, so he'll be trapped all the way as quickly as possible. Moving back to the start, we're going on board with Phil Gregory. See Chris Butterall coming through the middle. That's Galenicki on the left-hand side. So keep an eye on, Gwenneke gets punted and Ricky Green off track. Chris into the side of Martin through there. With the team championship safe for the Firefighters Charity, this race enabled everyone to go all out for position in the Drivers' Championship. Most notably, Phil Gregory can secure fifth. A better turnout for the Motorsport Auctions team this week. We're watching Alan McCain and Ryan Walker through Atwood, still lap one. Alan on the inside getting pushed off track by Ryan. Both cars needing pit stops. The two drivers from the Motorsport Auctions team were not the only one needing pit stops though. Martin Gwenicki after that turn one incident on the first lap. At the end of the lap he missed the initial pit entrance then decided to cut across the grass. That resulted in a 15 second penalty for Martin. We're going to switch now to Neil Bambo. We're riding on board with him on lap 5. He's chasing Talea for fourth. See Van Delden just up ahead. 
Neil Wright on the back of Toya's care. Coming through Mike Knight. Neil desperate to get past. He needs to make up as much ground as possible so he can catch Van Dolden. So drafting Toya into the back of him. That will cost him a little bit of time. Does make up the position though. Bamba up to fourth. We're now going to move to lap number six. We're going on board with Jan Malesva. Jan has completed six rounds, including this round of this championship. So up he comes through outward curve. The first driver with too much power on round there and into the wall. So there's plenty of action down the field, but what is happening out front between Soltau and Turk? Looking back at Soltau, that is the gap between them. This is the start of lap number 11. Coming down towards Moss and the outward curve. Daniel pulls away very slightly, opens up the gap a little bit more. If Soltau wants to win the championship, he's got no option but to get ahead of Daniel Turk. Both drivers will be pushing for the fastest lap of the race to gain an extra bonus point there as well. McCain was having a bad day at the office this week. He had already had contact with his motorsport auctions teammate Ryan Walker on lap one. Halfway around this lap, he spins the car here. Ends up facing backwards and then on the next lap, as he came up through outward curve, he then copied Jan Malesva. Took it off the track, but then into the wall the other side. Another pit stop needed for Owen. Time now to catch up with the battle for third and fourth in the championship between Van Delden and Bamba. Van Delden has made his pit stop. He's in eighth, as you can see from the ticker. Neil Bamba had moved up to third position. Coming into the hairpin there on this lap, he did spin the care. This mistake not doing his chances for third any good at all. Neil's then forced to wait as well for Matt Salaya to come through. He takes third position. This is all costing Neil time and allowing Van Delden to catch him back up. After that spin, Neil decided that at the end of this lap he would make his mandatory pit stop. So here he is, he pulls into the pit. Keep watching though because Neil overshoots it as well. He has to back up a little bit. In the background as well, there are two motorsport auctions cars coming through. One of those is Van Delden. So as he comes through, Neil loses all chance of finishing third in the driving standings. On board now with Soltau, just up ahead is Daniel Turk. That gap slowly but surely opening up between them. Lap 14, so halfway through the race. Soltau decides this would be his time to come into the pit, so Daniel disappears into the distance. Soltau comes in, he needs to make a real good entry into the pits here, no speeding penalties as well. So in he comes, gets the power down as much as he can before the limiter starts. Perfect from Soltau. Around the halfway point, more drivers started coming in for their mandatory stops. Ricky Green for the Firefighters Charity was one of them. His pit stop went fine, but he was caught speeding on the way out. That meant a 15-second stop-go penalty for him. Soltau, as we have seen, had already made his pit stop. So what about our race leader? Well, Daniel Turk did eventually come in for his as well. We are on board now. As he pulls out the pits, keep an eye on the main straight. You'll see one of the motorsport auctions cars. And then behind him is Soltau. So that gap is even bigger now. Daniel can breathe easy for a little while at least, while he chases the fastest lap bonus point. We're going to move to the battle for third yet again, and we are watching Simon Jackson and Van Delden. Jackson was the next to go wide. So while he's off track, there is Van Delden. So Van Delden catches him back up, stays on the back of Jackson. Everything seems to be going well for Van Delden and timing was perfect because Jackson then made his pit stop. That will have Matt back up into third. 17 laps done then, so the race order at the moment is Daniel Turk from Soltau from Van Delden. We go back on board with Soltau now. So as it stands, Turk and Soltau are tied on point. Turk would win the championship due to previous race wins. Tobias is chasing the fastest lap and makes a mistake, puts the car into the wall, gets away with not too much damage though, Ryan Walker comes through, that's not Van Delden, Tobias stays in second place, that fastest lap bonus point now looking even more important, and we're going to take a look at the fastest lap of the race now. Yes, it was Daniel Turk, so Daniel, we are following on lap 20, bear in mind that both the drivers didn't know what the other had set, Daniel may have been a little bit more apprehensive because Tobias had set the pole fastest lap. That was something for him to try and aim for. Just while we enjoy Daniel's fastest lap then, I'd just like to thank everybody who's been involved with the championship. It's been thoroughly enjoyable from start to finish. With it coming down to the last race as well, it has made it even more exciting. 
We'd also like to thank our partners for supporting us. Don't forget we have prizes on offer in each event. Acorn Printing are supplying polo shirts to the top three drivers. Now, if you don't win an event, don't worry. These polo shirts are also available to purchase on our website. Just head over to our shop. There is a link for Acorn Printing, and they are available in small to 2XL. We do have more items coming soon, including whites and baseball caps, so stay tuned for that. Keep checking back to the website for the latest updates. Bowden Solutions have been providing iRacing credits for our drivers as well. If you haven't got a load sale mod, don't forget to head over to bowdensolutions.com. They are out of stock, but if you keep pestering John, I'm sure he'll get another batch made. You may have noticed something different on the liveries this week. You can see it there on Daniel's car. That is our new windscreen banners. Bosra are the first PC-based racing league to become an MSA-approved organisation. Our thanks to Motorsport Auctions for making this possible. As Daniel comes to complete his fastest lap, one more thing we need to remind you of, and that is our next event. We are running a multi-class event. It will feature the BMW Z4 and the Mazda MX-5. It starts in a couple of weeks' time. If you haven't signed up already, then head over to the website, get your name down, and you'll be on the grid for the first race. From Daniel, we move to Neil Bamber. Neil currently sits in fifth behind Kip Stevens. We're coming into the final few bends. Kip in his first race in this event for Motorsport Auctions, so championship points not really a concern to him. He pulls out the way to allow Neil to come through. Neil moves up to fourth, Van Delden in third. So a handful of laps to go, nothing else would change. It would remain Daniel Turk in first ahead of Soltau and Van Delden. Here we see Daniel coming through the last corner to take the chequered flag. Our congratulations to the top three. It's been such a fantastic event. So close right to the end. Nobody dared call it. So Daniel takes the win. Let's check on the final standings. Bowden Solutions produce the very best load cell mods and pedal adapters to use with Thrustmaster wheels. You can order yours now at bowdensolutions.com. Confirmation of the results of the final round of the 2015 Aston Martin GT1 Championship. As you saw from this week's race roundup, it was Daniel Turk who took the win from Soltau ahead of Van Delden and Bamba. Daniel Turk taking that all-important fastest lap as well. Talia finished in fifth ahead of Phil Gregory, Simon Jackson and our new driver Kip Stevens in eighth. So, let's move on to our confirmed driver's standings. And it was Daniel Turk once again. Look at that, just a single point separating him and Soltau at the end. Van Delden finishing third, 17 points ahead of Neil. Bamba. Gregory finishes in fifth ahead of Talia, Buttrell and Golenicki. Simon Underhill was not present this week. He's off away with work. Simon Jackson in tenth. At the bottom of the table there is one new addition, that is Kip Stevens. He comes straight in at 25th. His first race of the championship. We hope he'll join us again for our next event. Finally to the team standings, it was the Firefighters Charity who took it, a massive gap back to Acorn Printing. Now don't forget we have changed the format of the results. Hopefully this will benefit the teams for the next event. Acorn Printing finish ahead of Motorsport Auctions in third and Bowdoin Solutions in fourth. So that wraps up the 2015 Aston Martin GT1 Championship. We hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll be back in two weeks for the start of our next event, the BMW Z4 and the Mazda MX-5 Multi-Quest Championship. Until next time, thank you for watching and bye-bye.